Hello beautiful friends, welcome to a new video. I'm starting off to show you Wolfie, who I'm walking almost every day in the forest. And I want to take you along in what I'm doing this summer. As you can see, I am making my hubby a small quilt. It is coming along, but I am not uh, doing traditional quilting here. I'm trying to incorporate all the things he loves in the garden by hand stitching on leaves and berries and all kinds of things. And I'm really enjoying myself working on this project. But at the same time, my friend Michelle over at Tape and Twine, hi sweetie, she inspired me to do something about all the hoarded beautiful things that I received from my friends that I have collected while on holiday. And they're all in this big, big, big pile and uh, it's overwhelming. I don't know what to do with it at the moment and I needed to take some time to go through these papers and find something to do with them find inspiration um i guess we've all been there i guess we all have these <laughs> beautiful things that we hoard for a little while and then it kind of gets away with us and that happened to me too so i will start a project I think with this and that is where I saw my friend's video and I was inspired to do a binder like Michelle is doing. I will link her playlist down below because she's doing this beautiful binder but I could not find the binder but I do have all these rings that could pretend that it would become a binder. And I also have this um, book cover that I had no use for. And I will turn it into a binder together with the rings. But obviously I did not want to leave the rings like they were. So I got out some rusty patina. You can see the brand here. It is water-based. So I had no idea if it was going to stick on the on the metal but what better way than just start doing it and start applying it onto the metal with a very old brush I might say because I was not ready to ruin any good brushes and I am wearing gloves like you see because I did not know this product and I really ventilated my room well and it went on like butter I mean it it was so easy to do this. I first obviously started with a, um, a paper clip and then I applied it to the rings. I love this and it is, you know, the kind of black, rusty, deteriorating looking metal and I really like it. I'm not sure if it is going to work once it's dry, if it will stay on here. So that's something I need to look into. Um, but first, I was just playing and I was really liking the results so far. So here you see all the metal bits that I did. I might say they did stick to the, the paper underneath. So I had to take them off real quickly and... Um, obviously uh, rinse out the brush really well and the next thing I wanted to do was um, take this book cover apart first take the spine off I used a craft knife to do that and um, I did not know if I wanted the, the width to stay the same but first let me take off the spine I'm taking a craft knife and just putting it on the thinnest part of where the spine meets the front of the book and just 
hacking away with it. it did a, not a really good job, but I got it done. And then I measured the width that I wanted this cover to be. And at first you see me do uh, 15 centimeters, but later on I decide to do it a little bit wider because I've got so many things and I'm not sure um, if they will all fit into a 15 centimeter wide uh, binder. So you see me do the 15 centimeters and then I hesitate. Do I want 15 or do I want it a little bit wider? And at this stage, I mean, what could go wrong? I still had the opportunity to make it wider and I did. So I put down some extra centimeters and, and after adjusting the width, I took my craft knife again and um, cut the spine to the width that I wanted it. Did this took quite some time, also because I forgot to change the blades. And really, a new blade will do you a lot of good doing this. I tried to break it, but it didn't go. But eventually, I obviously um, did manage to do that. And here you see the both the front and the back cover and I have them to the width that I wanted them and then it was time for me to punch the holes um, I spread them out evenly but forgot to film that and here you see the finished result of the rings inside the, the spine but there is a problem I mean it, it can't go really wide or or it already looks like a gator mouth. And for now, I'm going to put this project on hold and concentrate on other things. There was this wonderful, wonderful retreat for the summer by Lali Mill, an artist, a French artist whom I really adore. And I followed her artist retreat and it was wonderful. I also made a memory stone for friends of mine and really, I need to tackle all the mess in my studio. Because after done many, many projects, I'm left with a ton, a ton of mess. And I need to find a room to put it in and clean up my bits. I also went to a couple of museums with hubby, museums in the Netherlands that I really like. And they inspired me too. It is also time to do some creative journaling again. In my beautiful fairy journal that I created in March already, but I don't get around to working it in it very often and I felt like it was high time that I did something. So I cut these birds out of the papers that I found in my stash and I am really into crows lately. I love their wit and their resourcefulness and I see them all the time in my garden and in the woods where I walk with Wolfie. And I decided to make these pages even more beautiful. I received the paper on the left from Maureen. Thank you, sweetie. And I glued it down with some matte medium. I have two kinds of matte medium that I'm working with at the moment. The one you see me dipping my brush in is a heavy matte medium and it helps to not warp the pages that much and I'm protecting the page here so if I'm putting any, th any other paint on there or any other medium then it won't soak up into the page right away. It also helps to glue down the, the crow and I want to um, yeah, give this a good coat. So if I want to do anything to the page, it's really helpful to put down a coat of uh, matte medium. The page on the left side, I have already given a coat of matte medium. And I'm taking out a watercolor pencil and um, my Neo uh, Color 2s. Um, 
some um, markers um, and some acrylic paint. I have this idea to do branches also on the left side of the page, but I don't know yet if I want to do them in acrylic ink or I don't know what I want to do. And to make my life easy, I'm starting out on the right page. Just to give this crow something to stand on because <laughs> I cut off its feet. Um, because there was an apple or something underneath there. I did not like it. And I, when I cut off the bird, I immediately thought, well, I'm going to ground it with just some some paint and mimic a little bit of ground here uh, the neo uh, color 2 um, crayons that i use are water-based but if i use some matte medium on top of the of the neo color 2 i can blend them and at the same time make the colors permanent I am just spreading and blending everything and also using some acrylic paint in buff titanium. You will see me applying that in a second. Uh, the buff titanium is almost the same color as the patina of the paper. So anything that is white, that I left white between the... the the legs of the bird. I am using some uh, buff titanium on and, and blend the picture of the bird into the page. I find that really helpful and um, yes I have light buff titanium and a little bit darker buff titanium and they're both one of my favorite colors to use. I'm also using some dark brown to mimic the ground a little bit more and to um, also darken the shade beneath the bird a little bit more and that way I think I really ground the bird into the page. Um, yeah, how do I do that? Well, it, it it's something I, I practice and I think you can only learn this by practicing so give this a go it, it's not that difficult and uh, because I've put this layer of matte medium underneath and because I started with the Neo Color 2s there was nothing permanent so if I did not like it I could take it off again now on the left side of the page I also want to mimic branches and the first thing that I'm going to do is take out my watercolor pencil in brown so if I don't like them I can I can take it off quite easily because remember there is this layer of matte medium underneath I'm also um, trying again with the bird on the page so I know that I'm not only uh, drawing branches underneath the bird because you won't see them <laughs> But also some branches that reach out and that you can actually see. I find working with um, a watercolor pencil really easy to um, not be permanent right away. And also the same thing here. If you use a matte medium on top of the watercolor uh, pencil um, you can blend it out a little bit and make the make the, the pencil lines permanent. I find this a a really lovely thing to start with, not applying paint right away, but first doing something with pencil. When I was happy with the pencil lines, that is when I um took out my brush again and started applying acrylic paint in dark brown and first just following the lines of the branches that I made and slowly making them uh, darker and darker and then it was time to do the leaves and 
all I really did was applying blobs of green paint in various shades, lighter and darker. And I did not really try to really paint the same leaves that I saw on the right side of this, this, this double page. I just played around and <laughs> did not even look at the right side of the paint of the page just applied blobs of different co uh, colors of green after the first batch of leaves leaves dried i also went in with a darker shade of green to to give them a little bit of a shadow a texture really and um yeah still not doing leaves in particular just blobs of paint here and there and playing then it was time to glue the bird down and for this i used some matte medium again i mind you the uh, under layers all the paints are really dry now i left them to dry for i think almost an hour i went to get a coffee together with hubby and I'm gluing both the back side of the bird and the page. And I am gluing the whole thing down. And I love the way that this bird just blends into the page now. But it wasn't enough for me yet. So I wanted to do something more. And with my artist pit pens, I drew the branch that the bird is sitting on and I mimicked the the branch further into the page. I just followed what I saw that the artist that painted this bird on this branch and mimicked what he did with the artist pit pens. I also used a black thin liner a water um, proof thin liner to kind of um, yeah, attach the branch to the music notes that were in there. I don't know if I succeeded completely, but at least I gave it a try and I darkened um, the shades of the of the branch a little bit so that uh, it all blended into the page even more. I had to do the shading a little bit better with some darker colors. Here I'm using black and I'm also using some gray and some blue later on because there are some spots on the original painting that are bluish. And by just looking at it closely, I could see what I needed to do and this was my head in front of the camera. I'm so sorry. But I hope you um yeah, you get what I'm doing here. I'm using yellows, browns, blacks and blues to mimic what I see what the original artist did and by this I'm learning so much. And then I also decided that I needed to do um, some lining on the leaves. And I'm sorry that I did not film any of that. But um, yeah, the lining is something that I really love to do. And I think it brings it all together. I had a lovely time working in my journal again and I think I should do this more often. But at the same time I also love my sewing that I'm doing a lot of at the moment. And while hubby is also enjoying his time, his free time finally after working many many hours for, for far too many years. We are having a wonderful summer. And I know some of you reached out to me asking me if I'm okay. I am perfectly fine. It's just that um, my hubby is at home. Our son is at home a lot with his girlfriend. And we have quality family time, really. And we are enjoying that. And um, 
probably after summer we will all start working again a little more and that will probably mean that I have more time to do videos after this summer but for now I hope you are really happy with what I can show you and I love to do these videos for you so for now a massive thank you for being here again and also I see a lot of new people here on this channel welcome i i'm so happy that um even more people subscribe to my channel it is just wonderful and um yeah a huge thank you for for everybody who subscribed to my channel you're helping out my channel a lot so thank you uh for watching and i hope to see you again really soon and for now, I will be leaving you with a couple of photos of um, projects that I'm working on. Bye bye for now.